Hello everybody, I hope this video is finding you having an amazing week, whenever it is that you're finding this. If you are new here, I'm Christopher, and thank you for spending your most precious gift, your time, with me. It is something that I do not take lightly. If you like lifestyle planning, organization, home DIYs, vlogs, just basically, if you like anything, you're going to find something to connect to on this channel and within this amazing community. So go ahead and click subscribe. And if you're going to follow me here on YouTube, you might as well hop over to my Instagram because it is a great place to connect with all of you over there as well. As we settle into the beginning of 2021, I wanted to take the time to share my morning routine with you. And I wanted to do it in a not traditional morning routine vlog style video, I actually wanted to sit and talk to you around what my morning routine looks like, how I organize it, and what I do to implement it consistently. Everything that I discuss will be linked down below for easy reference, so open that description box, use the links, because it'll help guide you directly to any of the things that I discuss. We will cut away here and there where you'll see me doing my morning routine. However, the bulk of this video is gonna be spent talking you through what I do to make sure that I do it consistently because we know those routines that we plan and then we don't follow through with. This one is actually really doable. So let's jump in. My morning routine as a whole hasn't changed. Of course, some of the books I'm looking at or planners I'm looking at have changed. However, my routine itself is very similar. However, one thing has drastically changed this year in my morning routine. I follow Plan With Laken over on Instagram. I'll make sure to leave her handle below. And she put all of her morning routine things into one felt basket. And I thought this was genius because sometimes I find myself losing time in my routine because not everything is where I need it to be. And I use multiple things. So this has been a game changer and I'm absolutely loving it. I also customize a little seasonal tag that says my morning routine. That's just me as a person, so you do you. But having it contained to one spot is really, really helpful. The next thing I do is I actually write out my entire morning routine and I have it laminated and in the front pocket of this basket. I think one tip to make it really helpful is I think when we originally plan our morning routines, we say at 6 a.m. I'm doing this, at 6.15 I'm doing this. I don't plan mine that way. Instead, I designate things time slots because some days you'll have more flexibility and you'll wake up naturally at a different time. So instead, I just give everything a series of time. You're going to see as we talk through that my morning routine is two hours and 10 minutes, but before you're like, holy cow, who has that? That time slot also includes a half hour workout as well as 20 minutes of getting ready for the day and for work. So that time is allotted within that two hours and 10 minutes. Now I'm going to share step-by-step -step my morning routine. The first thing I do when I wake up, which is usually between 4.30 and 4.45, now that's insanely early, but you should know that I usually go to bed sometime between 7.30 and 8, so I get ample amount of rest and that's when my body naturally wakes up. So the first thing I do is I wake up, wash my face, brush my teeth, and I put my workout clothes on. This way, they're already there, so when it's time to do my workout, I have no excuse. I'll often also put on my tennis shoes and tie them just so I am all set. I allot that about 10 to 12 minutes of my morning routine. The next thing I do is make my first cup of coffee, which there will be several, as well as make my breakfast. Right now in the winter time, I'm really set on organic quick oats with almond butter, a sliced banana, and whatever berries I have to get through. I usually do three to four strawberries, sometimes five if I'm desperately trying to get through the berries <laughs> before they go bad, which oddly enough was exactly the case when I filmed this video. I'm a creature of habit, so I will probably eat this oatmeal recipe for the remainder of winter. I just like it, it's warm, it's hearty, and it is filling without making you feel over full. And I find that it lasts me through lunchtime until I'm ready to eat again. The next thing I do is I review my planner for the day. So the planner that I'm working in this year has already shifted, but I wanted something really streamlined for my work life. So I am using, I believe it's by Emily Lee. She does the simplified planners. 
However, this is the Dapper Desk Leather Planner, and it is just really clean and simple. So I like to go through my planner for the day. I do a five minute check. Now, I don't do a big plan on the weekend anymore and fill out the whole week. Instead, part of my nightly routine is filling out my planner for the next day. I like going day by day because things are so constantly changing, especially right now in the world that we're all operating in in our workspaces. So I like planning in the evening and I just like to go through and I'll sometimes look at my email as well and just update anything that maybe has a quick change or adjustment that needs to take place. That's the next five minutes, going through my planner and making sure I'm on track for the day. After I review my planner for five minutes, I designate the next 15 for my daily devotional. And the one I'm working through currently is 100 Days of Joy and Strength. I go through it, I read the passages, I say a prayer, and I usually journal that prayer within this devotional. I'm really enjoying it. However, I'm only a few days into it when filming this because this was my 2021 starting point for my devotional, but really, really enjoying it. After doing my devotional, I love to have some journaling time. And one of my favorite finds has been the five minute journal because it truly is five minutes. I set a quick timer on my watch and I do the journal entry for that day for five minutes. And it just allows me to kind of decompress brain dump some ideas and thoughts and feelings into one space and it is something because it isn't a huge amount of time and I've built it into my schedule that I really love being able to go and look back on and it's really inspiring to see the consistency of logging for five minutes and you will also be surprised of how much you can actually write and journal in five minutes and how many feelings and things and memories you can keep track of and look back on and I love it. Now, this is the way I break up my reading. In my morning routine, I read only nonfiction self-care books. In my PM routine, I am always reading a fictional book. That is new for 2021. I used to read one book the whole way through. Now I'm reading a handful of books, but I keep all my nonfiction self-care books as part of my morning routine to kind of set the tone, and then my fictional books I read in the evening. Currently, the one that I'm devoting a handful of minutes to, it typically doesn't take me the full five minutes, is The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. It's 131 ways to spark creativity, find inspiration, and discover the joy in the everyday. It gives you a challenge for the day of noticing things. So, for example, one of the challenges this week has been to find numbers in objects. So I find myself looking and then kind of keeping track to see what numbers I can find. I've been snapping a few of the images on my phone. I really love it. It kind of wakes up our senses to really observe the things that are around us. And one of the things that I really want to focus on this year is really seeing things, like truly taking in their beauty, their uniqueness, and really seeing it. And The Art of Noticing has been a really great book to drive that. After that, I devote 15 minutes to just straight up reading, and that is typically going to be a self-care book or some form of nonfiction. The one that I'm currently reading was a gift from my good friend Jen Ross from Pretty Neat Living, and it is having a profound effect on me, and I'm almost through with it, and that is The Feel Good Effect, Reclaim Your Wellness by Finding Small Shifts That Create Big Change by Robin Conley Downs. It is really accessible and easy mindset shifts to begin making in your life where you don't feel like a failure because of missing one thing and it just gives you a different perspective to look through your wellness journey and all aspects of your life and it has really opened my eyes to the idea of the compassion that I so willingly give to everyone else adapting a mindset to give the same amount of compassion and grace to myself when things don't go according to plan which in life is pretty often. So really loving this book, but my morning routine always will involve a 15 minute read of a nonfiction or self-care book to really balance me out and drive me towards my day. After I read for about 15 minutes, that's when I decide to jump into my exercise. So right now I'm doing a lot of yoga with Adrienne and doing her 30 day challenge as well as some workouts on Apple Fit. I'm finding in the morning is when I'm doing my yoga exercises, which are sometimes a little over 30 minutes, but I'm able to make them fit into my schedule. So I move for 30 minutes, I try to break a sweat and just make sure that that is taken off my schedule. Plus my workout clothes are already on, so I have no excuse. If I can't fit another workout 
in in the evening, I don't feel guilty because it's already off my plate. Even if it wasn't at the highest intensity, I know that I still move my body for 30 minutes. And that is better than nothing. After that, I do like to take a little bit of quiet time, hydrate my body with some water. My quiet time looks differently. Sometimes I will pick up that book that I was reading and read a little bit more into it. Sometimes I'll journal a little bit more. So I always keep my journal, which is the one that I'm working through um, in my basket as well because sometimes I'll choose to write. But what I've really been opting for lately during my quiet time is coloring. And I have two coloring books that I absolutely am obsessed with. One of my favorite is Prism Designs because they're just simplistic designs. I keep colored pencils also in my morning routine so they're right there. And I just spend 15 minutes coloring. Sometimes I'll even push it to 20 minutes and I listen to like spa classical music on uh, Spotify or Apple Music and I just color and it really helps ground me and clears my brain. The other coloring book that was actually gifted to me is Anne of Green Gables Quotes. I have a big and deep love for Anne of Green Gables. It's a personal connection to me and my grandmother and I will sometimes color in these and one page will sometimes take me two weeks to complete just because it's not something that I always do. I allow that quiet time to be whatever I need it to be. Sometimes it's sitting quietly and meditating, but I find that that is the greatest segue or transition into getting ready for my workday and then going into work. And that is exactly what I do with the last 20 minutes of my morning routine. I get ready for my workday and then I'm off knowing that I've already accomplished so much in the morning and it's a routine that's really reasonable and easy to do and I don't have it constrained into these very specific timestamps. I can make it work within the time that I have and sometimes the workout will be 30 minutes, sometimes it is 20 just based off of the yoga session that day. Sometimes a passage in my devotional takes me 10 minutes instead of 15. So I know that I have this flexibility to work and I I don't have things scheduled into a time and that would be my first recommendation to you is give it minute spots not time slots. That is my 2021 morning routine and I will keep you updated on it but I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that it gave you some inspiration to look at your morning routine in a different way, take away some ideas and make this year the best year ever. Nothing feels better than stepping back at the end of the year and seeing that you really consistently held to this routine. And I'm telling you, these tips and tricks will allow you to do that. If you like this video and are excited to see more content like this, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you are following me on Instagram. And I will end this like I end all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time, my friends, which will be soon. Bye-bye.